You are watching How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week in honor of Father's Day, I am caking a giant T-bone steak out of red velvet cake. It's a red velvet steak. Please subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you know when I have a freshly baked cake or steak. To make this cake, I baked two 12 inch square pans of red velvet cake, cooled them and removed them from their pans. Then I leveled the top, but I left the caramelization on the bottom. <gasps> Jeremy, you're not shocked? <laughs> You sound more like, okay. Like you have asthma. <laughs> <laughs> Just like cake, steak browns more on the outside as you cook it. So I wanna leave the caramelization and use it to my advantage. Okay. Everyone, Jeremy's fine. He's fine. He can breathe. He's just bad at acting. That's why he's behind the camera. Now I'm gonna stack my cakes together, placing one with the caramelization face down and the other flipped over on top so that the caramelization is face up. It's time to carve this cake into a steak. Dr. Seuss. I drew myself a template. It's really easy. There's a ton of steak pictures online. I'm not joking. Endless, endless supply. <laughs> so what I did is I laid my template on top and carved out the main portion of the steak. I then take the excess sides of cake that I've cut off because the steak gets narrow as it gets to the bottom. Carve, carve, carve. Steak is also carved. Something else that has a comment. Actually, the serrated knife that I use, the small one, to carve cakes is really a steak knife. <gasps> See? Jeremy? Shocker. Wow, Jeremy is... <laughs> At least he didn't have I want to call Jeremy Mr. Positivity from now on. Okay. You need someone to balance out the unicorn. That's, that's true. This is a lot over here. It's a lot of like rainbows, like sprinkles just fall from the sky over Jocelyn's head. I'm not even joking. Once I'm happy with the shape of my steak, I'm going to simple syrup all of this steak. You don't want to overcook your dad's steak. You wanna give him a juicy, tender steak that's perfectly cooked with the help of Sir Squeeze. It's time to dye some Italian meringue buttercream a deeper shade of red than the cake. I use the same food dyes I used to color my cake batter and I just adjust them as I go comparing my buttercream to my cakes until I'm happy. I'm going to fill this steak and restack it, but unlike most cakes, I don't want to just spread an even layer of buttercream in between. I kind of want to dome it a little in the center because the thickest part of the steak would be the least cooked. Now I flip my second cake on top, completing my steak cake. And before I crumb coat, I just want to darken the buttercream a bit more. Since it's on the outside, I want it to look more like a cooked steak would look and then I crumb coat and chill my steak. Once my crumb coat is chilled, I'm gonna ice this giant steak cake again and chill it one last time. My baking tools are kind of like my barbecue tools. Barbecue? Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> it's a peculiar barbecue. That is so barbecue. Cool I only barbecue. I don't just barbecue. <laughs> like that's so 2016. To cover this cake, I colored some fondant in like a reddish brown color. I measured the width and the length of the cake, rolled out my fondant, picked it up on a French rolling pin and draped it over the cake. Then I smoothed it with a fondant smoother and my hands and trimmed away the excess at the base. If your dad is not a steak guy, we have a ton of other great Father's Day ideas for cakes in a playlist right over here. And in fact, if you guys make one of these cakes for your dad, you could win a How to Cake It prize pack. Here's how. Make one of the cakes in the playlist, take a photo of the cake with you and your dad, and post it on Instagram using the hashtag HTCILovesDad. Three finalists will win a fun How to Cake It prize pack. We'll Delivered by Jeremy. <laughs> you won the prize pack. <laughs> <laughs> The next thing I want to do is create the grill marks in the steak. Very important. Very important. You don't want to mess up the grill marks, right? You want to prove that you know how to cook a steak. So I just used a wooden dowel to press in my grill marks. I did use a ruler, shocker, to space them because like, no, a barbecue's yeah. grill would be evenly spaced. Oh yeah. I think it was warranted. Yeah, personally. I agree. 
So just use the wooden dowel, press it into the fondant so you can leave indentations. Very steakhouse-y. It's barbecue, is what it is. I am making the T-bone on this giant steak cake with some modeling chocolate. So I like to roll it out in a bit of cornstarch. You can use a nonstick mat if you feel that you need to. And I rolled it out big enough to cut out a bone. I cut out the T-bone that I then laid on top of my steak. The next thing I did was roll out more of my modeling chocolate because truthfully the bone would be right through the steak. So we need to add a band of white chocolate along the top side that comes up to meet the bone to give the illusion that that bone is going fully through the steak. The next thing I wanna do is create the layer of like fat or gristle, I believe it's actually called gristle, along the side of the meat. So what I did now is dyed the rest of my modeling chocolate with a bit of brown food coloring to get it a darker color. Then I rolled out my modeling chocolate, making sure it was the thickness of my steak or the height of my steak. And I added a band all along the one side, gluing it on with a bit of clear piping gel. With my remaining brown modeling chocolate, I created the end of the bone, so it'd be sort of like the sharp piece at the bottom of the tea, and I attached that to the side of the cake coming up to meet the bone. For all of my basic recipes, red velvet cake, simple syrup, Italian meringue buttercream, and modeling chocolate, I have videos in this playlist right here. It is time to score this meat because the surface of meat has a texture. So to start off, I'm gonna use the tip of my sharp paring knife and I'm just gonna continuously score the meat with natural sort of curvy lines all over the surface of the cake. To texture the center of my bone, where it usually looks sort of dark and porous, I used a small piping tip that's used to make grass or hair. So it's a piping tip that has several little round holes. I just put it on my fingertip, almost like a thimble, and then I pressed into the modeling chocolate. Modeling chocolate is great. That's why they call it modeling chocolate, because basically, depending on its temperature, you can always go back and remodel it. It doesn't develop a skin on the top the way that fondant or gum paste do. It's time to paint this steak cake. I began by using ivory food coloring with a bit of clear food grade alcohol, and I painted my first layer onto the cake. Then I darkened that paint with some brown, with some black, and I basically mixed different combinations of the paint, watering it down more sometimes, and a whole different selection of brushes to paint layers and layers and layers on this steak cake. I also enjoyed using, I enjoyed using a dry brush. The great thing I love about painting is I find it more forgiving than a lot of cake techniques because you even have the ability to erase. If at any point you feel like your steak is too dark or you don't like a technique, you can always brush over it with more clear food grade alcohol like I did in croissant cake and wash your paint away and start again. I found that as I was painting, I was kind of losing the texture that I scored into the meat with my knife. So I deepened those grooves using a veining tool and I also made more of them along the side without the fat. To enhance my grill marks, I painted in a mixture of black and brown food color. Now unfortunately, we don't have any Eat More Cake Teas for dads. But if you're a member of the Cake Tea Club, this is this month's t-shirt and it comes with a free little yo-yo. Not a mini version of me. An actual, like the toy. <laughs> Imagine I just Aww. jump out. <laughs> Hi guys! Mm -mm -mm. Oh. oh yes, I branded the steak. <laughs> oh yes. Yes, I did. I used some metal alphabet cookie cutters that I had. I actually gave them to my son because I never used them anymore, so I had to go take them back from his mini kitchen. Oh, good lord. And what I did is, very carefully, I held each letter with a tweezer, and then I used Bernie to heat up the letter, and then I branded my steak with the letters C-A-K-E. 
Cool. Steak cake. And so basically the cutters just sort of melted into the fondant. And where they left that little frayed line, I painted in the groove with a very fine paintbrush, black food coloring to make it look charred. Cool. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm very happy. If you want to present this steak cake in a way that looks the most real, you can even put a little bowl of coarse sugar beside it so your dad can salt it. Sugar his steak cake. Sugar it. Now that is how you make a steak at a cake for your dad. I wish dad rhymed with steak and cake. Me too. That, that was wasn't Dr. Susie. Please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll know when we're having our next barbecue. You're invited. You're invited. For Father's Day, not only should you be making this cake for your dad, but you should be jumping through hoops for him. Orhan? Can Insert Yolanda jumping through Yes, hoops. this is going to be amazing. <laughs> go! Go, Yo-Yo, go! I wonder if he can place you just sitting on the hoop. That'd be amazing. Okay, hold okay, it still. Okay, Orhan, can I sit on this hoop and jump through this one? Go! I feel like Orhan is going to join the ranks of Jeremy. Come on, guys, be positive. Oh, yeah. see? <laughs> Jeremy, quick, you're getting sprinkles so on you! <laughs> Cut! Cut! <laughs>